Would you like a conventional biopic about Elvis? Me neither. This is why Baz Luhrmann was exactly the right director for the job. And Austin Butler? Well... Austin Butler's a movie star. If you've seen any of Baz Luhrmann's previous films, you already know what to expect from his style. It's big, it's fast, it's colorful, it's chaotic, it's a spectacle in all caps. And that is exactly the kind of movie Elvis is, because Luhrmann goes all out. You're getting it all, the fast-paced editing, the drama, the passion, the costumes, the glamour, and of course, you're getting rock and Role. This is something that needs to be addressed right away because Baz Luhrmann is a pretty divisive director with a very distinct vision. Some people love him, some people hate him. Personally, I really enjoy his signature style, even though I do somewhat understand why others might find him overwhelming or over the top. But his brand of joyful, spectacular maximalism just works for me. This unapologetic, theatrical style really isn't something Thing you get a lot of these days in movies and on top of that this is something very few directors can even pull off so yes i am a Baz Luhrmann fan and my god was i served the biopic i was hoping for i definitely had some concerns going into this would the director's style translate well into the story or would it swallow the narrative would i get hooked emotionally or would it be 160 60 minutes of razzle-dazzle that eventually gets tiresome. And of course, can this lead actor, whose name doesn't really ring a bell, pull off a persona as iconic as Elvis Presley? And I'm just going to start with that last one because Austin Butler is the movie. I mean, Holy fucking shit. Regardless of your opinion about the movie happening around him, you cannot deny that this is an exceptional, unforgettable, passionate, transformative performance. That energy and charisma are absolutely magnetic. And if you're wondering if it's even possible to capture the Elvis effect on screen in 2022, when it feels like we've seen it all, the answer isn't just a yes, it's a hell yes yes. Butler will make you want to dance, he will make you want to cheer, he will make you want to shake him, and he will also make you feel for him. What he does here is he pulls off a unique blend of commanding presence and vulnerability, capturing not just Elvis as a performer, but also Elvis as a human being. My point is, he's fantastic, and yes, the film is worth your time, even for his performance alone. It is is easily the performance of the year. I don't know what it would take to top this, and when people say that this is a star-making role for Austin Butler, this is in no way an exaggeration. It simply has to be seen. But there is a second major character here who I'm sure is going to raise a few eyebrows. Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks. He is the villain of the story, though he doesn't see himself as one, and he's also the narrator of the film. Telling the story from his perspective is a choice I keep thinking about, and I can't say I'm 100% sold on this, but I might be getting there. Baz Luhrmann borrows a page from Amadeus here, a film about Mozart narrated by Salieri, but the colonel is a lot less complicated as an antagonist. Part of it is that he represents a broader idea, and his interactions with Elvis have a clear deal with the devil quality to them. But also, Hanks really leans into that scheming, villainous persona with his performance and the occasionally over-the-top accent. He does get a little weird at times with his line delivery, but overall, it still works, and seeing Tom Hanks, America's dad, as an almost must twirling villain is certainly an interesting treat. The rest of the cast is very good as well, but Elvis and the Colonel are the only two properly developed characters in the film. The dynamic between the two, the almost Faustian bargain they reach with the artistic freedom and the love of the people at stake, is at the core of Elvis once you look past all of the stylistic elements. When it comes to the actual storytelling, the movie definitely keeps the biography aspect 
pretty surface level, especially in the first half. If you're looking for an in-depth biographical drama, this isn't going to be it. But in that case, I highly recommend you watch The Searcher, which is a great two-part documentary about Elvis Presley. The movie, on the other hand, burns through Elvis's life and the pacing and editing are absolutely insane for a while, especially compared to the more dramatic second half of the film. That does mean it skims over certain elements of his biography as well as certain relationships. The two underdeveloped characters that hurt the narrative the most are his mother, Gladys, and his wife, Priscilla, two incredibly important and influential women in Elvis's life. You still get a reasonably good grasp on how and why these relationships affected him, but the intended emotional impact that has to do with them just doesn't hit as hard as it should. Instead, the movie is a lot more interested in exploring Elvis as a person and as an artist, what inspired him, what drove him, and why his career path ended up being what it was. It has Baz Luhrmann's signature combination of tragedy and romanticism, which is incredibly fitting for this particular story. Now, if you have concerns about the runtime, yes, at 160 minutes, it's long, and because the pacing changes pretty drastically in the second half, you definitely start feeling it towards the end. But I was never bored, and if there was another whole hour of this movie, I would have happily watched it. You see, Elvis is not a perfect film, and I'm sure you'll find plenty of critical reviews out there, but it is the perfect example of how easy it can be to overlook a film's flaws when it gets what's important right, when the experience is so captivating and when the lead delivers an out-of-this-world performance. It's an age-old story of a dreamer and a free spirit living in a world that's resisted to change. It's about the American dream that turns into a tragedy. Here's what it comes down to. If you're looking to see Baz Luhrmann's auteur take on Elvis Presley as an artist within the context of his time, that is exactly what you're going to get and it's going to be an incredible ride. But if you're still, for some reason, expecting this director to behave when it comes to additions of modern music or somehow restrain his maximalist style, you are not going to be happy. And that is on you and your expectations. Is Elvis going to be a divisive film? Absolutely, but I am going to insist that this is a really good movie. I love Buzz Lorman in all of his colorful, chaotic, romantic, yet tragic glory, and this is definitely the most Buzz Lorman thing I have ever seen. Regardless of its flaws and questionable choices, I simply felt it when I watched this movie, and I absolutely got swept up in the spectacle of it all. I am going with an 8 out of 10 for Elvis. I think it's a fair rating, all things considered, though it might go up slightly after I watch it again. We'll see, but I will definitely be watching it again. This ain't no nostalgia show. We're gonna do something different.